Hello and welcome to the Quest on Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Rakhi Bakshi in this show. As you know that we keep bringing new and leading personalities and each week they tell you their stories, they share their views and vision. So now on Rajya Sabha TV, we again have a very special guest. She's a veteran theatre personality, Miss Sanjana Kapoor. We welcome her to the show. Welcome, Sanjana. Thank you. Thank but you, uh, of course, we should start with Junoon, uh, which is the theatre group right now you're very, very deeply engaged with. Tell us why Junoon, the name first. The name is actually quite by chance. It has nothing to do with the fact that my father made a film called Junoon. Yeah, I was ago. just thinking that. Um, it was actually my the co-founder and uh, my co-founder and colleague Samira Anger who thought of the name and suggested it uh, because it represents everything that fires and powers us. Uh, we are filled with Junoon and we are realizing our Junoon through everything that we do um, in Junoon. So it just was the most perfect name and I love the sound of it and I love the meaning of it. Um, so that was just quite by chance. People keep saying, is it because you were a father's film? And that's film? what you aim no. to do, to spread that kind of Junoon around. Exactly. I mean, we want theatre? We, we want to exactly that. We want to try and, and ignite this passion uh, in people across urban India. I mean, the, the, the big the big dream is is quite ambitious but we're doing it with very small little little baby steps um, and our vision is really to to create a, a, a value for performing arts and theatre at the centre of it because that's our focus but performing arts and arts uh, beyond that um, in our urban life and we really strongly believe that you can't have urban existence without centralizing the fact that, that the hub of our soul needs to be ignited by, by creating hubs of So you say that activity. you're engaging through this theater, you're also energizing through this. Absolutely, we need, we need, you know, we're going to create smart cities, we're creating a hundred new cities, we have migratory populations across this country and if we don't stop and say, Acha, what is this 5,000 year old tradition we keep claiming we come from, what is all this great art that we have? Where do we access it? It's so difficult to access. We have to design into our life and infrastructure access points. So that's what we do. We are that bridge. We create that bridge between audiences and artists. We dream up ideas of how to create the bridge, how to create that connect. Uh, how should school children be exposed to the performing arts? How should office goers be exposed to the performing arts? How should neighborhoods uh, be able to engage with the performing arts and therefore even the arts so beyond performance? Do you, do you travel a lot? Do you travel to all those areas uh, which you're talking about so that they should have access to theatre? Not as much as I'd like to. I mean, I actually have always secretly wanted to be a gypsy and travel endlessly. My son laughs about the fact that my dream is to have a caravan and drive across the country. But um, I do travel right now. We have a school program, so we're in five cities. So I've just been, uh, we're in Patna, we're in Ludhiana, Delhi, Guwahati and, and Bombay. And so hopefully we'll be in more and more cities slowly, slowly. And when we so are looking in these, at children, especially, not only uh, they are a focus of ours, children and youth and uh, and, and young professionals and, and adults. I mean, it's not as though we're only a children's organization, uh, but we do believe we have to impact our tomorrow. And the best way to do you that know, you, you talked about smart cities. So how much art we have in society and how much, uh, let's say, the system supports it? The system, we, we have a big lacuna there, right? Because we really don't have uh, infrastructure that allows this connect to happen. Uh, we, we, I think we need a greater, and possibilities I think are arising now. I see that we live in a world now that actually values collaboration, whether it's the polit political uh, environment or, or the bureaucratic in environment, which is the toughest to crack, or <laughs> even just the society at large. We do value, we understand the value of collaborations. And I think whether it's private public partnership or various schemes that are coming into being, this, I think, is the future of but India. But is it challenging or do you get frustrated, for example, sometimes or maybe anguished at times? What do I get at times? Anguished at times. Anguished! Oh gosh, all the time. All the but time. I think, I think uh, one can't, you know, you can't let yourself be, be cowed down by that. I think you have to, um, it's tough, it's, it's, you have to constantly wade through. The, the struggle of, of just simple things that are just not in place yes. and, and, and uh, simple things that you take for granted in other places in the world and they're just not there here. But yet I think we have the spirit. I've just come back from Bikaner uh, where I've visited the most extraordinary theatre venues that are lying decrepit and unused that 
just need a little bit of imagination and money and insight and they could be beautiful hubs of activity where there are theater groups who long to perform but they have no space. Um, and then I get to speak to, I visited a, a building that's being made and I speak to this 87 year old gentleman who his dream is before he dies to build one theater and build a football training stadium. We have such extraordinary people and here in India. And I just said, my yeah. God, you are amazing. What a but star But one would are. like to ask here, and com coming back, like this question has really been asked you a number of times, but you know, one had known Prithvi and you've been so closely, closely related and associated with Prithvi Theater Group, which is so prestigious and credible. Uh, so now why Junoon? I mean, talk about this whole scene. The, oh, Prithvi taught me everything I know and, and, and more. Uh, 21 years was a long time and breathing life into this gorgeous baby and I always used to joke about the fact that you know I wish it would grow up and become 21 and then leave home but it never will you know and I used to it's so so terrible that you have to be careful what you joke about because I left when it was 21 when I had spent 21 years there. Prithvi is now about 37 years old. Um, but I think my ambitions got really big and I, I, I really did want to move beyond just the locality of Bombay, just the locality of one venue and seed that experience and that learning in various places. So I, we've also in Junoon, we partnered with other organizations to create India's very first theater management training program oh, called SMART. And this is initiated this year in January. It's for theater groups across the country to, to, Which was so much needed, to sign in and to participate in this course. It's a course, but it's an intense course for professionals that gives you, and it's, what's interesting about it is we've developed it ground up and looking at our reality in India and not reinventing the wheel of also. So we've taken from management or international experiences of, of management and yet it addresses our concerns and needs. So I'm sure in another five years it's going to impact the in ecosystem of the practice of theatre across the country. But would you see any difference between Mumbai and Delhi in terms of theatre scene? I mean, that Of course, of course, of course, there's huge difference. Uh, I call it Bombay huh, because that's what it is in my heart. So I can't, Mumbai is difficult for me to say, but uh, it, it has a Marathi based culture, which is, is you know, 250 year old exactly. theatre practice where it's a literary practice, it's a classical music uh, culture. Therefore, theatre is an extraordinarily strong part of the life and ethos there, and therefore, even Gujarati theatre. Yeah. And so, Hindi theatre came alive and was given a home by the building of Prithvi Theatre. And that's what the aim was. We need more homes like this. We need homes for theatre across the country. Um, and the saddest moment for me was celebrating 25 years of Prithvi Theatre in 2000 and, when was it, 2003. I can't remember now. It's okay, we are okay with numbers. Date, yeah. yeah, I'm very bad with numbers. Yeah. And the, the, there was only one Prithvi Theatre. And that year, though, the one glimmer of hope was Ranga Shankara in Bang Bangalore. Mm -hmm was being born and so we celebrated it with that as well but two theatres in this country yeah I know and, and the difference so has, people, has the situation been really sad in that sense it's that been it's tough and what people yeah. don't understand is that we need theatre venues auditoria that curate and design what they have they might, it's not just a building Buildings happen everywhere. How do you breathe life into that building? And that's what's critical. And I think that's what we miss in the arts a lot, whether it's dance or music or, or why does Delhi not have a theater dedicated to dance? Why does it not have a theater dedicated to music? Why does it not have a theater dedicated to puppetry, which is such an amazing rich art in our country? We don't have a single venue. So when you're saying theater and performing arts, are you trying to really uh, create a fusion sort of thing or maybe a holistic approach to, to, to arts per se? Yeah. Completely. I don't think they're disconnected from each other. I think they all interconnect. I think that there is, that there is a, you need uh, to have an awareness and alertness and, and, and a value of, of all the arts, even literature, even painting. Uh, you know, you've got to be open to this. And I think if you're an artist, um, and, and that's what we're doing with schools. When we <clears throat> do our school program, part of it is exposure-based for the children to get exposed to and understand, 
ये अपना है भाई ये किसी और का नहीं है इट्स माइन आई कैन बिलोंग टू दिस इट्स नॉट सम एलियन आर्ट फॉर्म विद इवन इफ इट्स पकाशन फ्रॉम केरला और इफ इट्स वट एवर इट इज नोटंकी फ्रॉम फ्रॉम द नॉर्थ इट इज माइन and to celebrate the plurality of what we have the huge variety and richness of what india has across our arts but also you saying that you know as people sometimes say and, and and i was reading that you said it that it's not only elitist i mean theater sometimes is perceived to be elitist those who have money go to theater and pay but that's what you're trying to do not to really pr- propagate that but also taking it to all kinds of people isn't Absolutely. it Absolutely i think i think uh, i mean for me the greatest joy is, uh, even working at prithvi was presenting shows in hornaman circle garden which is a garden in south Bombay. because that trip from south to north even though it's a tiny city just was terrible traffic wise we lost our audience so we said chalo we'll take theater to our audience for 10 years we presented theater free it's the only time we presented free theater because i believe our public places need to have art free. but do you think you'd actually got it in legacy somewhere your grandfather your mother do you think it i think it's it's, in, it's yeah it's a dna whatever dysfunctionality <laughs> it's a madness it's letters. an obsession it's a junoon but it's clearly something that that has come down and i i think because he used to tour and you know used to take uh, those viraj kapoor toured with prithvi theaters so did my british grandparents exactly. shakespeare yana toured and i keep saying uh, for me the greatest joy is i don't spend 10 days without meeting somebody somewhere who comes up to me saying are i met somebody in ramthambore just last week saying your mother and father came to my college how sweet in chennai you know i it's it's just extraordinary the way they traveled across this country and so i believe we have audiences everywhere i believe we have audiences who will even pay i uh, one of my lovely experiences was getting a rickshaw from the airport in in bombay to prithvi and chatting with the rickshaw wala and at first i was complaining about the rickshaw wala turning out to be like delhi rickshaw wala they fight always and then we started talking and he told me about all the theater walas that live on the way how amazing and then he told me about how he used to go to the theater and he doesn't anymore so that's the power of theater and we will talk about it after a very short break that we are taking right now here on the quest on rajya sabha tv but don't go away because sanjana kapoor has a lot of interesting issues to talk about so please stay on Welcome back to the show you're watching the quest here on Raj Sabha TV we are talking about theater but we'll also now talk about a little bit of cinema that Sanjita Kapoor has done and you know what was the experience <laughs> like <laughs> and in fact i remember watching hero hero oh my gosh <laughs> oh okay with the scene well i was very very young and i realized something extraordinary at that time i think i was 18 and i realized that it was no good just coming from this family where you were exposed to cinema world cinema you were exposed to all the kind of incredible greats of the world and you had a critical view of things but i had no idea how to work as an actress i had no idea how to work and why that did happen in fact that's a curious question i was completely at a loss of not knowing what to do and there i would see nasir and he would just be this extraordinary you know he was so prepared it was just i don't know whether he does how much homework he does or what he does but he it is never a moment when you see him floundering or at a, a loss of what yeah, to do yeah. he's just so beautiful and and i was you know ah so in fact i went to drama school after yeah, i did hero hero la la i thought oh i have to go and figure it out how to and i knew that you know one needs to go to either drama school or one needs to like my parents did uh, learn on the job like even my family raj kapoor shami kapoor prithvi raj kapoor they That's all the learned on the job that's the thing i want to ask that you know they were so popular in mainstream cinema so to say but they dedicated so much time energy to theater and that's something very interesting to look at well that's what people forget that that firstly they all all the three brothers had their training in theater they spent years uh, two years or three years traveling with prithvi theaters raj kapoor would do the sound music he would do the music composition sometimes he would design the lights uh, he would he would they would put up sets they would do everything my father would go with a bhopu and announce the shows uh, in a rickshaw and hand out leaflets at other cinema houses i mean they had to do everything they traveled as a family this huge 150 people in bogies oh, across the country yeah. uh prithviraj kapoor formed his theater group at the peak of his career when in yeah, 1944 and, and you can imagine what india was in 1944 yeah. i mean the fervor in everybody's hearts and prithviraj kapoor said just if, before independence yeah, that would happen and he yeah. said if i want to touch people's hearts and minds i can't do it through cinema i can only do it through theater and that's when for 16 years he traveled across the country and his theater spoke about issues like 
whether it was the, the farmers' issues, which even today are a huge issue, yeah. whether it was partition, whether it was in fact we had cinema uh, of that kind also. Which exactly, we, you know, and I mean, and it was incredibly powerful theatre, and I think that for my father it was a mixture of not only his father but then his wife's family exactly. and he, come to that. so 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 you, he you traveled. worked with your mother, mother also yeah. Chattis, yeah. how was it like i mean remembering your mother working and also watching your father work you know i when my father produced his own films it was always this tight knit unit and it was just like this big family working together so it was really beautiful it was this lovely born homey i remember i was 10 during junoon in lucknow and i would write the i would keep the continuity continue the continuity <laughs> sheets or whatever i would write the, i don't even remember what it's called now and it was so much fun you'd be part of it you'd be the clapper boy you'd you'd be the runner you'd you just dived into doing whatever it was that you had to do if you had to put on a costume and get into a crowd scene you did that and um, it was it was it was lovely. And how did it feel? It recently deserved and got the award also, which is a very prestigious that award. That I think was actually one of the most amazing things. I I don't think I you know we're very uh, we're very British when it comes to being self effacive and and not you know saying much about awards or not con you know considering awards to be the greatest and end all be all and end all. But this award, I think, was particularly special, and I. Oh, the only thing I can say is because of the love we felt as a family. I mean, we just got this love from everybody uh, celebrating it with us. You know, it wasn't our award. It wasn't my father's award. It was their award. It was, it was almost an acknowledgement by the government of, of everybody that loved my father. And it was just so beautiful. It was incredibly overwhelming. Talking about creativity per se, you know, talking about uh, that kind of cinema which happened that those that period and theater that time it had message also it had some connection to the society and what was happening around and looking at today's again the creative forum cinema and theater how would you really like to take a look at it i mean would you see any difference in the kind of power that I, think, had? I think cinema is changing in india in that we're finding a new language of cinema which is not necessarily from the popular framework it's moving into a different realm and we're talking about stories which concern us here and now. I mean, if you look at Court or you look at various, mm. you know, even Lunchbox is just such a simple film, but it's, 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 and I think we've got another kind of cinema, a lot of regional cinema that's, that's incredibly uh, powerful. And that is exciting to see. It's exciting to see that we're able to, again, I've always said this, it was the infrastructure. You know, in the 1980s, the parallel cinema or, or, or was too, it was before its time. Now you have the multiplexes, you have a different distribution network system. You can make a small budget film. And there's commerce and there's creativity. How would you look but at you that balance? But you have to balance? balance the two, and you can still make a small budget film, and you can still see it, you know, reach audiences, and you can still see it happen. And that is what is wonderful. And in theatre, we still are waiting for that that aha moment of the infrastructure to happen. But it is is that a problem? Slowly, funding it's slowly, other slowly things? happening. It's slowly, slowly happening. I think there are slow, small, small changes taking place. One challenge which maybe some, someone would like to look at it is like freedom to be told, freedom to uh, say something that you really want to say. So all kinds of things are happening around us as we are talking, uh, awards being returned and uh, some filmmakers have done it. How would you look at this whole, again, idea of creativity getting the platform without any hindrance? Oof, it's paramount. It's the most important and critical thing. And I think that's, that's why I can, you know, we all say we, we, the one major fundamental, whether it is your media or whether it is uh, uh, artistic expression, that you have the freedom of speech in this country. And I think that what is terribly, terribly scary is that we're having these, these uh, social groups that are going out and actually policing what we yeah. can do and how we can live. And, it's scary. It's scary because one is not feeling that you have the backing of the system behind you that is actually supporting you. You have, you get a sense that the system behind you is actually backing the lumpen on the streets there, and that is terrifying. And so we don't know where you don't know where you stand anymore. And if if I find a you know a stage in my life when I, when I have to look over my shoulder and worry about what I'm writing or what I'm saying or what I'm producing or 
what I'm presenting, I think that's not an India that I want to live in. It's not an India I want my son to grow up in. But I, I hope... Your son who wants to be a journalist? He does. He, a does. TV <laughs> journalist. he wants to be a journalist. Yeah. So, and Valmik, your husband, takes a lot of interest in environment. He's known yes, for. Yes, yes. Well, he works with, with trying to save our wilderness and our magnificent tigers, but a lot with the government and a lot with government systems. Um, and I think that, that that's what. I think we have to find a more collaborative way even there to work with the government. Finally, uh, I see many of these theatre artists finally uh, finding a way to cinema, actually. Uh, would you see again that as a problem that finally one thinks that the pop adulation and popularity and the kind of, you know, attention one wants uh, comes from this popular so. ad audience uh, only through cinema, popular cinema? Uh, you know, in the, maybe, in the, maybe in the 80s, uh, in the 90s, perhaps early 90s, that may have been an issue. I think what's interesting now, especially in Bombay and in the big metros, is that there is a younger population that is... Uh, creating, firstly, uh, a type of theatre that is that is much more confident, that has their concerns and issues at heart, and they want to do nothing but theatre. They love theatre. They have to do other things like ads and perhaps TV, which is terrible. They really want to stay away from doing <laughs> TV, and they want to do cinema. But their main aim is is theatre. Unfortunately, it's really tough to survive of theatre. And why not TV actually? That's an interesting point. I, I'll tell you why not TV. And the saddest thing is I think TV has enormous potential. And I'm shocked that in India, after all these years, we still haven't tapped the potential TV has. Um, I'm not talking about your kind of shows, which are, which are more news-based or interview-based. But I'm talking about fictional yeah. uh, work on TV. We just are not... We're catering to the lowest denominator, I think. It's something like what cinema did. In the 80s, Indian cinema, I think, was really at its lowest ebb. And I think it has to, it'll go through a so, so cycle and it'll then create a new wave. And we have to find new talent. So TV, uh, in, in the soap operas and everything that is existent for, for actors and talent, directors, writers, creates such bad habits, such terrible working styles that it ruins you. I have seen beautiful actresses, beautiful actors, yeah. stage actors just ruined. I see them come onto stage after they've done TV for a year, two years, and they've lost it. And they've picked up terrible habits, you know, quick little tricks. I think that's what you want to actually do now through Junoon, actually, to, to really get it the right place in terms of taking it to all kinds of people and not really... Slowly, slowly. We do. We hope to ignite ignite this little... You know, Satyadev Dube used to say that uh, theatre ka kida hona chahiye. So I think there's a theatre, there's a theatre kida that we need to put into everybody. And how do you go about it? You also have the, these workshops. You yourself do face-to-face. -face yes, I'm doing a workshop just next week in Gurgaon and, and we've started doing workshops now for, for the public at large, for children, and then we might even do workshops for adults as well, for parents especially, how to deal with your children and how to engage with your children. Um, but I think it's about, again, just seeding this value. It's about just bringing you into this world of ours, which we, which we know is transformative. We know that the arts, when they're done beautifully, can transform you as a person because they... They make you feel something, they make you think something, they show you something in a new light, whether you read a poem or whether you see a performance. And it's essential, it's absolutely critically important. So uh, finally, some few questions, uh, you know, uh, images of, let's say, your childhood and teenage when you saw, uh, you know, your father there uh, was a popular actor. And I mean, now, how is he now, in fact? He's very frail, he's, he's not very well, but he's, he's comfortable, he has a routine life. Um, uh, it's, 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 he goes down, he lives opposite Prithvi Theatre and he goes down to the, the theatre every now and then, but he's, uh, he's okay. And the whole Kapoor legacy, let's say to art, cinema and theatre, mm. how would you take a, you know, how would you look at it? Oh, oh gosh, for me, uh, personally, legacy... Because you are also somebody uh, who has to shoulder yeah. that responsibility I mean, of... legacy comes with, exactly, yeah. legacy comes with responsibility, it comes with a huge, it's a, I don't take it as a burden, but I take it as a responsibility. And it's something you have to earn. I don't think it's something you can just um, claim. So even when I worked at Prithvi, I worked at Prithvi with huge terror and fear of, will I be able to, 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 to stand up to what should be expected of me, just for my job, not the job I'm doing, not I don't care about what the world thinks, but you know. Um, 
and it's very terrifying and it's very scary. But I think in Prithvi, I slowly, slowly, and my father was an enormous inspiration for me, an enormous backer of my crazy ideas and dreams, and a good critique. I mean, he was always my, he kept an eye on me and would say, this didn't work, this worked, and, and he was wonderful. Um, but even when I did TV, I did a small yeah, stint well, in TV, yes, sure and, and my father would say, Acha, hmm, your makeup wasn't good this time, or your hair was horrible, oh, nice. or, or you're not breathing right, your breathing was all wrong. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> You know, we've talked about cinema, theatre, art, uh, your parents, and it's been such a lovely journey, I think, through this conversation. I wish that I continued it, but we'll have to wrap it up all year. Before I actually do that, your quest, uh, Sanjana, what is your quest? Everybody has a quest going on. Oh, gosh. Really, to see, to see, okay, a very personal quest, to live in an India where I know Everywhere I go, I can delight in theater, and I can access theater easily. And for me, if I do that, that I know it's a symbol of everything else. It's like for, for, for my husband, for him, the tiger is a symbol of the healthy jungle. It's not that he just wants the tiger to survive. It's a symbol of everything else, and not only a healthy jungle, for the people that live around it, because if there's a jungle, you have wells full of water. I mean, it's all interconnected. So for me, if I see an India where I can travel to the, to the you know, to any rural, any not rural, rural is out of my realm uh, and focus, but urban part, a small town, two-tier city, three-tier city, and I can access the, the performing arts and theater, and I know that my child can, and I can, because children are very important, then that would give me and enormous that's joy. Too. But it's been lovely talking to you, and I really <laughs> wish you all the best in your endeavors, and the tours that you want to actually take on and see all around India. Thank you so much for talking to us on Rats. But even that was Sanjana Kapoor. In fact, there were too many questions that still held, because uh, there was less of time, but we are wrapping it all up here. Hope you like this particular edition of The Quest here on Rajya Sabha TV. Namaskar, and bye-bye.